In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about uniform electric fields and what makes them different to radial fields. So a uniform field is one in which the field strength can be considered, considered the same anywhere in the field. So it says electric there, it's not just electric. And a situation in which you have come across this before is when we're doing calculations here on Earth. Because when you're doing Subat equations and that sort of thing, we use g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Or in terms of field strength, we'd actually say in terms of newtons per kilogram. And we don't change that value of g when we're working at different heights, we just keep it the same. And that's because in that the sort of range we're talking about, the field strength doesn't change very much. So we're assuming that Earth is a uniform gravitational field. And it's exactly the same thing with electric fields, so we assume that the electrical field strength is the same throughout. And one way we come across this is when we're dealing with parallel electric plates, so looking like this diagram here. So we've charged one of them up to plus V, and we've grounded the other one or made it zero volts, and we've separated them by distance D. So from your formula sheet you'll come across this equation. Field strength is the rate of change of potential with respect to distance. So in this equation you can see that your change in distance between the two plates is d, so del delta r is d, and the change in potential here is v minus zero which gives you v. So we can calculate the field strength by just doing the change in potential between these two plates divided by the distance between them. So let's look at an example which is a slightly bit more complicated than that. So we've got two parallel plates, one's charged to 200 volts and the other's to 20 volts. And we've separated by a distance of 10 millimeters. So let's just quickly sketch what this looks like. So we've got 200 volts and we've got 20 volts. And they're both positive. And we've got this distance here of 10 millimeters. So, in terms of stating the equation, because one of them's not grounded here, we can't use exactly the same equation, so we have to revert to a slightly more complex version of it. Delta B over D, which in this case is going to be 200 minus 20 divided by 10 times 10 to the minus 3, because it's in millimetres, and that ends up as being um, 1.8 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb, or you might write that as 18 kilonewtons per coulomb to the minus 1. And the data we've used is if we look two sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs, so our answer should be to two significant figures there. So if that's the field strength, what would be the force if an electron were passing between the plates? So you should know the relationship between force and field strength is you just multiply it by the charge that's moving in the field. So we've got the 1.8 times 10 to the 4, which is your field strength, multiplied by the charge of an electron, remembering that it is negatively charged, which a lot of people will miss out. And again, just plug these numbers in, you should get 2.9 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. And again, two sig figs, two sig figs, so two sig figs is an appropriate or significant figures for the answer there. Okay, so that's how we can calculate the field strength and force from an electric field. So let's move on slightly. Um, before we move on, if you want to look at what typed out form looks slightly nicer, there it is. Pause it if you want to have a look. Okay, so we've talked about field strength, so now let's talk about potential. Now, one thing you should know is the field strength is the rate of change of potential with respect to R. So that means if field strength is constant, the rate of change of potential as you increase the distance should be linear or have a constant gradient, like if you like, or constant change. So if you want to see what that looks like more graphically, uh, we're going to look at the potential. So if we say here 
we're at the starting point, so we haven't we're starting at the thing, and here we're at, at a distance of D or the plate separation. What you find is this graph here is a straight line or should be a straight line if I were drawing this accurately. Okay, so this is how the potential should vary between them. You can see some examples here, so halfway you should have half the potential, quarter of the way you should have three quarters of the potential, and so on and so on, that type of thing. So let's have a look at this in an example form. So you've got two plates separated by a distance of 10.0 meters, and they're charged to 200, we've got one of 200 volts, and the other one is charged to minus 20 volts, and we've got a separation here. 10.0 millimeters. So we want the potential a distance of 2 millimeters from the 200 volt plate. So we need to work out essentially what the change in potential would be. So our delta V across the two plates is 200 minus minus 20 which gives you 220. So that's across the whole set of plates D. So because it varies linearly, if you want to know what, how much it would change over 2 millimetres, your change in potential would be 2 divided by 10, because it's essentially, or essentially 1 fifth, and you times it by the difference between these two plates, like this and I actually I won't calculate it at this stage. So then the potential at 2 millimetres will be the starting potential when it's 0 millimetres, so 200, and it will be subtracting this value here, and that gives you a potential of 1.6 times 10 to the 2 volts. So if we see here, uh, this was actually 2.0 and this was actually 10.0, so we've got two sig figs here, so your answer should be two significant figures here, which this is. So, those of you interested in this process of knowing the relationship is linear and working out the difference is called linear interpolation here, so that's the mathematical process that's being used here. So let's move on to the last thing and look at breakdowns sort of stuff. But before that, if you want to see the nice, neatly written solutions, there they are. Okay, so the breakdown field strength of a material is the electrical field strength at which the electric field is strong enough to rip an electron off an atom of a particular element. So this causes a spark to jump between two plates where it actually looks like a lightning strike because essentially you now have a free electron able to be a charge carrier so it's as you've got a potential difference you've got a charge carrier you've got a complete circuit there so it looks like a lightning bolt strikes between them and the plates become completely discharged when that occurs and there's this other thing called breakdown potential, and that's essentially you can calculate the potential difference you can put across your two plates at which the, at the material between them will break down. And that can be calculated using this equation here, which is essentially a rearrangement of this equation we looked at earlier with respect to electric plates, but we're looking specifically at the breakdown values. So let's look at an example question for this. So, Air has breakdown field strength 3.0 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Again, it's a field strength, so it has units newtons per coulomb. Calculate the minimum plate separation if two plates are charged to 18 kilovolts and 0 kilovolts, and you wish to be able to use them safely. So the being able to use them safely implies that there shouldn't be a spark jumping between them, because that's inherently dangerous. Okay. So if we think about this, we've got our... De it's given you the delta V is going to be 18 minus 0 is 18 kV and you've got your E is 3.0 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So we think about our equation we've got E 
is going is delta v over d. So if we want to get what d is, we need to have delta v over e like this, which is going to be 18 times 10 to the 3 over 3.0 times 10 to the 6, which, if you stick those numbers in, comes out as 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 6.0 millimeters. Again, looking at the numbers, we've got two sig figs, so that would be an appropriate number to give your answer to in this case. And this would be the minimum possible distance you would get for them not to have a spark jumping between them. And as per, we've got the nice neatly written out format should you wish to use them.